uh, want to let you know that really tonight can be as complex or as simple as you would like to make it. I'm going to opt for the simple, and I'm going to tell you that really uh, we are here to try and make sure that we are, as a school, as a school community, as a family, focused on continually doing better. And in particular, we do not want to take for granted that our reputation as a welcoming school, our good work as a welcoming school, is something that is automatic. Don't want to believe that just by having a 60302 zip code, that's something that takes care of itself. Really want to believe that it is something that realizing that, you know, somewhere between 15, 18% uh, of our school community is turning over every year. And every year is different in terms of faculty, but there is no year that the faculty remains stagnant. So you name me something that a school is about, and I will tell you that if you don't come back to it every once in a while, it's not really something that your school is about. So those of you who have been here for 23 years like me know that this is not the first time that we have said uh, in a very straightforward fashion as a school community, this is something that we are committed to. It's something that we haven't done in a while, but perhaps in that respect, it's overdue, but if you are somebody who knows my predecessor, Susan Gibson, who hired me, if you're somebody who bought a, uh, a house in our school district because you knew the kind of school that Bi was in particular, or the kinds of schools that uh, District 97 was famous for having in terms of being very, very committed to human dignity and cultural pluralism, you know that there is nothing new about what we're doing. It is a revisitation uh, of past commitments. So with that said, I want you to know that our school improvement team is going to give you just a little bit of context for how this came to be a part of a plan for this school year. We're going to give you a little bit of context in terms of how this folds into other things that we're doing at Bi School. Uh, and we hope that it will be something that will be seamless and will be inculcated in what we do. And uh, I want to give you a chance to hear from a teacher because we know that here at school, uh, teachers are the most important person in your kids' universe. And uh, so as important as it might be for you to hear from me or from somebody else, I want you to hear from a teacher about the work that uh, primarily has been going on with teachers until tonight, and we have a chance to share with you as parents. So our goal uh, is to inform, to educate, hopefully to sensitize, uh, and to raise awareness, because those are the things that undergird respect. And so if those things are on the increase, we believe that respect and the safe feeling that goes with it, the welcoming feeling that goes with that sense of respect, will also be on the increase. That's another reason that we are here tonight and that we're committed to this kind of uh, endeavor. I do want to let you know that if you are a guest from outside, I meant it when I said we're thrilled that you're here, but we didn't throw this party for you. This really is, uh, it's a bi-school PTO meeting, and so if you are from outside of our school community, as glad as we are to have you, we're going to ask you to please allow the participation parts of tonight to be for our parents uh, and our teachers and our staff members who are here with us. Uh, we hope that the goal of being a safe and respectful school will also be realized in the kind of meeting that we have tonight, and we certainly thank you in advance for that. Uh, and we hope very much that no matter what brought you here, that you have come with an open enough mind uh, to perhaps leave transformed just a little bit by something that you hear. Uh, folks have said to me, isn't this really a, an issue for older kids? And there certainly are pieces that uh, are not appropriate for our littlest ones, but our littlest ones become our bigger ones, and our bigger ones become our biggest ones. So there is no piece of this that is disconnected from the kids that we are teaching now. Our job is to try to make sure that uh, as the adults in their lives, as the adults in their lives at school, we are appropriately deciding the pieces of this that should be a part of their school life. Because if, although it would be neater for school life to be cut off from community life, uh, it would not, in fact, be better. And so a little bit of the complication of tonight is actually something that I would see as a blessing, and it's another reason that we are so glad that you are here. So with that said, I want to introduce Lynn Kamenitsa, who's one of the co-chairs of our school improvement team. Okay, well, like you said, I'm chair of the school improvement team. Some of you might not know what that is. The school improvement team is a group of parents and teachers that come together each year and we write the school improvement plan. Our job is to come up with a plan where we lay out what it is we want to do and then talk about how we have or haven't gotten closer to those goals each year. Specifically, the school improvement plan each year focuses on three things. The achievement of all students, closing the achievement gap, and improving the school climate at five. So each year the plan is designed to try to continue to make progress in each of those areas. So how do we get from that to tonight, 
excuse me. About a year ago, in the spring of 2009, we discussed some incidents where students had used insensitive language about being gay to a student who had two gay parents at home. And we talked about this in the school improvement team, and we realized this was by no means some isolated incident. Rather, this was just one example that reflected a pattern of insensitivity that all of us, parents and teachers, had all witnessed among bi students in the past. So we decided to be proactive and make sure that our anti-bullying efforts, which you're going to hear about in a minute, that our anti-bullying efforts consciously included efforts to prevent hurtful language and behavior that were related to sexuality, to family structure, and also sexuality, family structure, and gender stereotyping. Okay, so we really wanted to make sure that that was something that we were addressing in a proactive way. However, we realized that not all by parents and teachers had the same level of comfort or knowledge or awareness, or awareness when we're talking about those kinds of issues. So to help achieve that comfort and awareness, that's what we brought in Illinois Safe Schools, so that they could help each of us become more comfortable with the conversations that, quite frankly, can be very difficult for some of us. And if any of you have fifth graders like I do, you know how difficult any of those kinds of conversations can be. People have bodies, oh, oh my gosh, you know? <laughs> so we brought in Safe Schools of Illinois. Our school improvement plan for this year calls for four sessions of Illinois Safe Schools. Three are staff development sessions and one is this parent night. The aim of all of these sessions is to give us as parents and teachers kind of a toolkit or a toolbox of things that we can draw on or not draw on as we see fit when we're having those conversations with our kids, whether that's in the classroom, in an office situation, or in our homes. Okay, so this is meant to be a toolkit. We have not purchased, we have not adopted any curriculum that is aimed at children. This is resource material for adults, and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Then those adults can use that to make those conversations easier. That said, I hope that all of you will be able to take away some resources and some tools tonight that you can use when you're having those conversations with our by students so that we're sure that we make this place a place that where all students, all teachers, all families, and all parents feel respected and they feel welcome. So that's what we're doing.